Welcome to my home, RVA. I am Cindy Merritt, and today we are visiting with an international organization that's right here in our own backyard. This is Sherry Dahl, and you're the executive director of what? Of Brand and Marketing at Child Fund International. Child Fund International. Okay, tell me what Child Fund International is. We're an international child development organization, mm -hmm. mainly helping children in developing countries. Africa, Asia, the Americas. The Americas, so how many countries are you in? 25. 25 countries, that's great. So what do you do for these children? Um, our primary focus is education, health, safety, and income generation. And this is the kind of organization where people can sponsor a child, is that right? That's right. Okay, tell me how they do that. Right, for $33 a month, okay. you can be linked with an individual child whose family and community we're working with to improve the circumstances for children. So it's child-focused international development, which means that we work with the community to identify things that are hampering the healthy development of children there. Um, it could be health and sanitation issues, it could be educational issues, it could be safety and security issues, it could be income issues, right? All the above. So we link with these families through local partner organizations, basically local nonprofits because okay. you need it to be sustainable in right. districts in Virginia, right? So we're working with these local organizations and empowering them not with a cookie cutter approach, but really working with the community and the families to identify specifically what they need in the context of their circumstances and putting together a plan. And then you're linked with an individual child. That child and family are not given the funds that you send in. Those are pooled with the funds from other generous oh, sponsors. Okay. All right. And they're delivered in the form of community improvements and programs for the children and families. Things that they've identified that they need. Okay, for instance, a school. Um, and we're actually sitting in a school that's come back from where? You are. You're sitting in a schoolroom that um, I visited really? in, okay. uh, in a very rural community in Kenya. And um, it was so modest. And at the time, my boys were in middle, middle school and elementary school. And I was so struck by how modest it was. I think I went in the fall when we were getting ready to buy school supplies. Uh -huh. And I was so struck by how modest the school was. And I thought, boy, if my kids could see this, they would really appreciate their education. Most of the countries that we work in um, increasingly have universal education. So all children um, have the opportunity to go to school. But frequently, they must have a school uniform, or they must have school supplies, or the circumstances are not safe for children. Imagine if your children go to school and there's a latrine for the girls in back of the school. Sometimes there's a risk of the girls getting raped as they go to the school, to the latrine, or getting accosted. Um, sometimes the travel to the school is a bit of a safety or security risk. In fact, one of our programs uh, that's been very successful has been buying bicycles for young boys and girls to get back and forth to school because it, it improves their um, safety to get there uh -huh. on a bike. So this classroom I visited, it was quite modest, and I said, boy, it would be wonderful if people could see this at home and so right. it's been displayed at the UN, it's been right. on Capitol Hill, um, just to, to remind people that that you know life is, is challenging life and different, is different for a lot of other kids. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that struck me is we have a collection over here of <laughs> tiny little pencils that you know our kids would, would toss these away uh -huh. but these were the pencils that they were that they were using actually oh my and um, in some of the pictures I traded them new pencils, right, in order to get this little collection of, of pencils oh, that they pencils. were using, right? So sometimes um, the children really value education, and so it was it was not a depressing visit at all. It was okay. quite lovely to visit this little school, uh -huh. but we knew that, gosh, these children could really thrive if things were a little better for them. Right. And actually, um, just this very day I've been working because there's a typhoon about to hit the Philippines in an area that we work in, okay. and so there's always emergencies and certainly the families and children that we work with are more vulnerable than others because they're already living uh, in, in a lot of poverty, right? So their housing isn't as safe, their circumstances are more vulnerable. So emergencies, we're always looking for donations, we're always looking for, for donations that we can just use to address the greatest needs of the children that we serve. 
Um, in addition to that, if people are looking for a great gift idea, we have a great gift catalog. Oh, um, okay. Where you can send flocks of chickens or build a well or, um, you know, water buffaloes. Okay. And um, if you send, uh, if you buy a camel, we actually send you a stuffed camel that you can put under the tree. Oh my goodness. If you buy two donkeys, we'll send you a stuffed donkey. The other gifts, um, you will We'll give you a gift card that you can gift card, so you can do it actually in honor of Absolutely. someone. So instead of buying somebody a gift and putting a gift under the tree, when so many people have so much already, you can make a donation in their name. Yeah, it's become really popular. With personally, I have a, a lot of um, nieces and nephews who are tweens, teens, and and young adults, right? Uh -huh. And they love that, right? So that, to know that they've got a gift that did some good in the world. Um, rather than one more thing. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, Sherry. So we're in front of a display of toys that the ki the kids make these. Is that right? They did. Okay. I'll tell you a fun story, Cindy. Okay. Um, one day, years ago, uh, the president of Child Fund came into my office and showed me this. He'd just gotten back okay. from a visit to Kenya. All right. It's, a, it's a flip flop. It's this a boat. Is a, it's a, a flip, flip flop, flop, but this okay. is a boat. And he said, this young man gave me this. He said it was his most treasured possession and he gave it to me. And he was really proud that he was sharing this with me. And I was really touched by the fact that a child had given him this, he had been playing in the water with it, and uh -huh. the young man had given this to him. Uh -huh. Well, I was traveling and a kid gave me a soccer ball that they had made, right? This is a soccer ball. And I okay. was so proud to come back uh -huh. and show this, right? Oh my goodness. And it's, it's it, yeah, it's just it's, a homemade soccer ball. Uh -huh. This one's made out of some kind of, of of uh, banana bark cloth. Oh, so okay. I was really intrigued and we started showing our colleagues. So it became quite a competition around our office to see what kind of homemade toy you could collect. And we never took them from the children. We always traded them something that they right, wanted, right? right. Uh -huh. Anyway, it really turned into a thing in our organization, uh -huh. right? And at one point we shared it with National Geographic and they featured it in the Geographica section of the magazine, oh, right? The no. story of the little boy in his boat. And it's turned into a collection that ended up traveling the world. It's been it's um, in it, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, Japan, uh, in many locations around the United States. And for a while it was housed in Rochester at the National Museum of Play. And really, and really this, fun. This is, it's a, it's a water bottle yeah. that they've made into a car. It just shows you kids are un right. Play is universal. Kids uh -huh. are ingenious, right? And their creativity is amazing. And you can see the different skill levels, right? This was, um, you know, just a tin can that some kid made a, a guitar out of, a right? Guitar. Kids are universal. They, they are. They just want to play. They want to learn. And they're happy and resilient no matter what their circumstances. As long as they're fed uh -huh. and healthy and um, safe, right? Even if their circumstances are modest. And that's where Child Fund International comes in, is to give these kids a chance to be kids and not have to worry about all of the bad things that could be happening that's in their right. environments. We, we try to look at all of our development through the lens of child protection. Children can thrive, even in modest circumstances, if they're safe, right? And um, so we focus on health, education, safety, and and uh, finding ways to help them have income to stabilize their income. And sponsorship's a great program for that because when you sponsor a child, you you stay with them for a number of years, and rather than just being a moment in time, right? Mm -hmm. You're with them through their childhood. I know um, a couple of the children that we've sponsored were sponsored for eight years, and we've watched. Eric, the young man we sponsor in Archer's Post, we've watched him grow up, really, with my boys, and it's been a really enjoyable experience, right? That's, that is so wonderful. Yeah. All right, if you're out there and you're looking for a way to get involved, give back, um, even if it's a one-time donation, consider Child Fund International. They do really great work all over the world, 25 countries, including the United States. Come down, make yourself at home with them, make yourself at home with a child, and you'll be really glad you did. Cindy Merritt is nationally recognized as a leader in the U.S. real estate market. 
of the more than 35,000 realtors in Virginia, the American Institute of Real Estate Professionals consistently ranks Cindy in the top 10 best realtors in the state. Make Yourself at Home is sponsored in part by Paul Adams, branch manager and nationally recognized senior loan officer with Prime Lending, a Plains Capital company. With over 400 mortgage options available, Paul Adams and his team work hard to uncover the key to each client's mortgage success.